Hello everybody and welcome to another Let's Try To Fix It video. In today's video we have this Sony PS5 DualSense controller and I purchased this off eBay. The issue with it is that it supposedly has a broken charge port. Now when the package arrived it came with the battery out of the case or out of the controller and the connector that normally goes on the actual motherboard here is on the end of the battery connector here so someone's been inside the controller and they've just obviously ripped it out and it's ripped the pads off of the board um, but the question also is why were they in the controller in the first place so I guess we're gonna find out so I've never worked on one of these before this will be the first one but we're gonna crack it open and take a look inside so let's get into it all right so this is the controller here now we do have to take off this um, battery cover case thing. I'm just going to switch over to the microscope. Alright, so this is inside now. I'm just going to take out the screw for the uh, battery case so that we can remove the battery case. And we've also got a little microphone that we have to unplug down here. I think we should just be able to unplug it with that. Oh, it just came out anyway. Right, so this is the battery connector area here. Now you can see the connector on the end of the battery plug there. I'm going to remove it. So this should have been sitting in here. Hmm, which way? Yeah, I think like that. <laughs> but instead they've ripped the whole pad off the board. So what we're going to have to try and do, there's no pads here, so we're going to have to A, find the pad, we might be able to scrape back this pad here, this one looks like it would have possibly been running to this capacitor, and this one has a point here, so we might be able to pick up on that point there, so it looks like the ground pads, this one here and this one here, have been ripped off, so we're going to have to try and put a new pad to ground. I'm not sure if this here is actually ground, but we can test that with a multimeter. Um, so the first thing will be checking these uh, traces to see where they go and then see if we can run some new traces and put the port back on and then find out if there was a pre-existing issue with this controller. All right, so I've got my meter in continuity mode. The first thing I want to do is I've just scraped back a bit of this contact here um, to see if this is actually a ground plane. So I'm going to just have to find ground somewhere. Just seeing if any of these other connectors have like an obvious ground. So if we go off the charge port, this should be ground up here. We'll see if it connects to this. And it does. This looks like this pin here, there's three pins and then the grounds on either side to hold the connector down. This looks like it was ground. And then we've got another terminal here. It's hard to see if this trace connects with this side of this capacitor or not. Might have to zoom in a little bit further to see. And then this bottom trace is not a ground, but these two are connected, so we might be able to make a jumper wire over here. Alright, so we're going to get started with uh, just running some jumper wires and uh, go from there. So it does look like this side of the capacitor would have met up with this trace here. And then on this side we've still got this contact point here 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 um, and then we've just got this big ground plane here so we should be in the clear with any luck and we should be able to just reattach this trace here um, so we'll get started and try and put something down here so that we have some pads on there so really what would be nice here would be some um, replacement like copper pads so I could just lay them straight down but unfortunately I don't have any of those in the shop at the moment so we're just gonna have to improvise a little bit 
Now we need to add some more flux to this. And the idea here is I just want to create a bit of a stronger um, ground plane so that when we plug that connector back in, we've just got something to hold it there for the time being while we run the other traces. Okay, so with this connector, I'm also just going to have to remove these traces here um, the, because the pads are stuck to the back of the connector. So we'll see if we can just do that. The soldering iron. Yeah. And then the other two I don't care so much about because it's actually going to make our lives a bit easier. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder that down just with that big chunky um, ground plane we made here uh, and that'll just hold it there for the meantime while we try and run these other traces and I'm just going to add some solder to this one here. Okay, that'll do for now so see if we can scrape back a bit more of this ground pad here and we'll just make sure that's not some kind of positive pad nope, that is ground okay All right, and then I'm going to add um, a solder blob here just to see if we can try and get that other connector um, just to grab onto that ground as well for a bit more strength. See if I can do it without running a wire this time. Oh, look at that. That should be pretty strong. Alright, so next up we have to do two jumper wires, so we want to go from this pin well, that's very loose. Should be okay. I go from this pin to this side of the capacitor here, and then this one here, we're just going to jump over to this one here. And then uh, once we've done all that, we're just going to check to make sure there's no shorts, because uh, that would be very bad. Okay, so we'll get it onto this pad, this pin. And then we'll go down to here. I'll have to add a bit more solder there. Alright, so that one is done, so we can pull it off. And then we're going to do the same, but with the last pin there. Add a bit more solder to this one. And there we go. Alright, so I'm just going to zoom out now so you can see this from bird's eye view. I'm going to clean this up because there is flux everywhere. It looks significantly worse on the microscope camera than it does in uh, real life. So it's probably a little bit tricky to see, but we've run a wire from this pin to the end of this capacitor and this pin to this uh, component over here. We've got the ground pins secured on the side so this thing ain't going anywhere 
And next we're going to check for shorts. Great, doesn't appear to be any shorts. Now what I want to do is actually plug in the battery, see if the controller is now working, um, and go from there. Okay, so I've just put the plastic cover on for the battery, and I'm going to plug this in and see if it's going to charge. Now we still have to be careful when we plug in that connector. Alright, and I'm going to plug this into my amp meter and see what happens. Okay, we're getting orange light coming up. Let's go into a blue light. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's not pulling anything from my power station. But when I plug it in, it is going orange, so it's doing something. I'm just going to try plugging this into my computer. So this is a handy program in Windows. If you open the Star menu and type in joystick, you can pull up this little panel here. And if you've got a controller plugged in, you can view the properties and see the axis and rotation graphs coming up. And then when you press a button, it'll register on here as a red dot. So you can easily test if your controllers are working or not. So that appears to have worked. So now I'm just going to take it apart again and I'm going to apply some UV masks to this so that it will um, prevent these wires from getting damaged. So we'll just put some on there. And it should help also strengthen the connector. So I'm just going to put a little bit around the sides as well. But that should be plenty. We've got our UV light. So I'm just going to leave this on for a couple of minutes and come back. UV mask is cured. Now we can continue reassembling this controller. And so we'll put the battery cover back in. Now it doesn't seem to stay in there very well. Um, what I'm going to do is put on some tape. So this tape here that I'm using is actually tape from iFixit and I find it significantly better than the um, red tape. Um, it's quite a lot easier to work with and it's kind of like a more traditional um, double-sided tape whereas the red tape is kind of more like a film I find. So I'm just going to chuck some of this on here and this should keep the battery down and it'll be easy enough in the future if we ever need to remove it that we can remove it. That should hold that down. So then we will continue with the reassembly. So this controller is back together. Now you'll notice there is some scuffs and a bit of uh, junk on the controller. So what I like to use is a little bit of orange power to clean this up. Now you do have to be careful, um, particularly on painted surfaces, it can smudge the paint and destroy the colour. So things like a PS2 Slim, you don't want to use it on that because it will screw up the paint job. But on a controller it's generally fine. Of course I've never tried it on a PS5 controller so I'm willing to give this a test and see if it's going to destroy any paint. So you just grab a cloth, put a few dabs of this on there. And with a little bit of orange power it's come up quite nice lot of that finger grime and stuff is gone and it also gives it a nice shiny finish so thank you for tuning in to watch this video if you liked it please hit like 
please don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for future content like this. We'll see you in the next one.